last Friday, right after you made the mistake of deploying your code on a Friday, the world's most popular JavaScript framework, Next.js, was hit by a critical 9.1 security advisory. The exploit allows an attacker to bypass authentication and authorization in Next.js middleware, which is really bad. Like, if you have a software as a service product, normally you would have code in your middleware that says something like, if you know pay me yet, redirect a pricing page. But apparently, Vercel, the company behind Next.js, has been vibe coding its security logic recently, because an attacker can just say no thank you to any auth checks and use your app without paying. This mistake has led to a mass celebration among Next.js and React haters, who are currently screaming I told you so from mom's basement, and even big public companies like Cloudflare are using this as an opportunity to poach customers from Vercel, leading to some glorious tech bro drama on Twitter. But the most important thing to know right now is that if you currently have a Next.js app in production that has not been upgraded, you could be in serious danger. So in today's video, we'll find out how screwed you really are, and learn how the worst Next.js security flaw of all time actually works. It is March 24th, 2025, and you're watching The Code Report. Let's get right down to business. If you're currently running a Next.js version that hasn't been patched, you want to upgrade as ASAP as possible. However, if you're not using Next.js middleware or hosting on Vercel or Netlify, you don't need to worry. But if you're self-hosting and using Vercel middleware, your app will likely be dead by the time you finish watching this video. Here's how the exploit actually works. Virtually every web framework out there has a concept of middleware, which is basically just some code that sits in between a request and a response on your server. As the name implies, it's a layer that sits in the middle and is often used to perform generic actions like logging, error handling, and authorization, so you don't have to re-implement that logic on every single route. That's all good, but the security researchers who found this exploit were dumpster diving through some old Next.js code and found a header that could be used to skip any Next.js middleware that you want. You just need to know the name of the middleware and add it to this middleware sub-request header. And it just so happens that the middleware names are easily guessable thanks to naming conventions. What's scary about it is that it's a very easy exploit to pull off, and if your website uses middleware for authorization, it could do some serious damage. But the issue also created some collateral damage. Like Cloudflare tried to deploy a rule to automatically block external use of this header, but then they had to go back and make that opt-in only because it was causing false positives with third-party auth providers like Supabase. Now, although this bug is really bad, most people are not upset about the bug itself, but rather the amount of time it took to fix it. It was first reported to the Next.js team on February 27th, but didn't actually get patched until March 18th. And that's just way too long for an issue this severe that's not very hard to fix. What's funny is that the CEO of Cloudflare used this as an opportunity to pump their new tool that can take a Vercel deployed Next.js project and automatically deploy it on Cloudflare, claiming that unlike Vercel, they actually care about your security. But the CEO of Vercel would not let this aggression stand. He pointed out how Cloudflare was responsible for Cloudbleed, one of the worst security disasters of all time, and also said their DDoS protection is trash. Naturally, the Cloudflare CEO responded with a meme, and the whole interaction was just cringe all around. I've been a happy customer of both Vercel and Cloudflare, and wish we could live in a world where all tech bros got along. But maybe a more realistic solution is to use a drama-free Linux server from a provider like Hostinger, the sponsor of today's video. Not only do they provide fully managed hosting solutions, but also virtual private servers where you can deploy anything, including frameworks like Next.js. For under 10 bucks per month, you could be running your own server with predictable pricing and a respectable 2 CPUs and 8 gigabytes of RAM. In fact, when you create a server, you can automatically configure it with tools like Coolify, which makes it possible to host Next.js on your own VPS with minimal pain. If you're looking for freedom and an awesome developer experience, check out Hostinger with the link below. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.